Hi and welcome to another episode of Punk Science TV. This time we're going to be bringing it right back down to earth. Those of you who already know about my work might know that I talk about something called the black hole principle. Now what exactly is the black hole principle? Well, you might have heard of black holes and know that they're these big guzzling monsters out in space. Well, you know what? That picture of reality is actually wrong. And I've been showing in my work throughout the years that black holes are not these great guzzling monsters. They're actually the creative centres of the universe and the data actually backs this up. So what do we really see happening at black holes? Well, they still have the singularity at the center. What we really see is from the singularity, this sort of oneness at the center of a black hole, you see this spiraling light coming out from the center. This is infinite light and it travels and spirals down through the dimensions and it hits this barrier, it slows down until it reaches what we call the speed of light, which we think is the speed limit of the universe. But it's not actually, it's just a limitation of our perceptions. So this I'm renaming as the perception horizon. And when the light slows down and it gets to the edge of this barrier, it then splits and becomes antimatter and matter and this matter can take the shape of anything like electrons or neutrinos and this antimatter is like the mirror image particle of the matter so in the case of electrons it can be positrons and so this creation process is happening all the time and what do we see out in space uh, when we look at black holes, we actually see that electrons, matter in the, in, the, in the form of electrons, are streaming out of black holes at the speed of light. Why? Because they've only just slowed down enough to actually come into our reality. All of this sort of stuff, we can't see. It's beyond our perception, beyond our measurements. It's beyond the speed of light. This is the stuff that we call dark matter and dark energy. So this is what's happening in black holes that go at the centre of galaxies. You see these electrons that have only just slowed down um, below the speed of light so that we see them coming out of nowhere. But that's not all. We also see that antimatter, usually in the form of positrons, comes streaming out of the centre of galaxies as well. And but that's not the whole picture either, because this is not static, this is not a static process. Um, the two can sometimes recombine and that forms light again. So, and it usually forms it in the form in, of gamma ray bursts. So what we have going throughout the cosmos is this breathing process. Um, at the edge of a black hole where sometimes it breathes and it produces matter and antimatter and sometimes it breathes again and it produces gamma ray bursts and this is the sort of pattern we see all over the universe. Um, these gamma ray bursts that we can see throughout the sky are actually coming from this breathing process of black holes and what's really interesting is this pattern doesn't, is not set. Sometimes the breathing takes just a matter of seconds and sometimes it takes um, a few hours and sometimes it can take days. And so uh, sometimes we don't see this happening for a long time and those are the sort of galaxies that we call sort of inactive galaxies. Um, but it can sometimes happen so quickly that uh, astrophysicists are, are really stumped because these processes are very, very powerful. They're stumped as to what is actually creating um, these gamma ray bursts that we see and these fast moving electrons that we see and in fact the antimatter. So um, I'm not just leaving it there at the centre of galaxies though. Um, I'm calling it the black hole principle because um, I believe that 
Um, the black hole principle happens all over the universe. It's like a fractal pattern where the same principle is happening at every single level. So I'm going to be focusing on um, where we can see these patterns on our very own planet today, our planet Earth. So some of the principles that we've seen, if the black hole principle is true, we should see electrons at the, at the speed of light. We should see fluctuations. And we should see antimatter being produced. Now, all of those things should be present if the Earth is going to be seen as a black hole. So the Earth shows that same black hole principle that happens in outer space. <laughs> You've got to be joking. So the very idea that the Earth, the very planet that we are um, living on right now, is actually a black hole sounds absolutely crazy. And um, believe me, I have been to call that a few times in my life. But let's look at the evidence. Now, the science is all about the evidence. And remember, we're looking for these features. We're looking for electrons being emitted at the speed of light. We're looking for fluctuations that happen very, very far, sometimes in seconds. And there's no sort of definite pattern to them. And we're looking for the production of antimatter. Well, I have news for you because the Earth itself actually produces the very things that we would expect if the Earth itself was a kind of black hole dynamo and showed the same principles as black holes that are out in galaxies. So let's have a look at the evidence. Some of you might be aware that the Earth actually has fields around it called the Van Allen belts. Okay, it's been known about for quite a long time. But what you might not know is that the Van Allen belts actually contain electrons that can go so far sometimes that they are actually up to light speeds. And nobody seems to know why. Well, if we look at our black hole principle, that's exactly what we would have predicted and expected. Now, NASA, just last autumn, sent out a probe to look at these Van Allen belts. And within days, it did something extraordinary. It actually produced an extra ring that was really unexpected. This extra ring appeared in a matter of hours. And again, it was temporary. It fluctuated. And nobody is sure why that happened. Well, again, if you look at the black hole principle, Rapid oscillations and fluctuations are things that we would expect. So it's looking quite good for the black hole principle being present in the Earth at the moment. Then the third thing that we were talking about as what just one of the features of the black hole principle is the presence of antimatter. Now surely there's no antimatter coming from the centre of the Earth. Well, actually, um, we don't really know what's at the centre of the Earth. We know more about the surface of the Moon than actually what's beneath our feet and what's the interior of our very own planet. People assume, because they see these electromagnetic fields, that what's beneath our feet is actually a great big molten iron core that moves around and that produces the electromagnetic field. They also think that this uh, molten iron core is what sometimes erupts through the surface of the, of the planet and that's what we call volcanoes. And it's this sort of moving around and shifting of the molten iron core that actually creates earthquakes. Right, well that's a story that we have been brought up with but guess what? There's no evidence or proof for this at all. And in fact, signs from our 
nearby planet Mercury shows that it also has a strong magnetic field around it. And Mercury is deemed too small to have an iron core at the centre. There's also lots of moons out there that seem to show magnetic fields, including our own moon. So what is going on? Could these cherished theories about the Earth actually be wrong? Huh? There have been some recent studies again that have been looking at the Earth's interior and guess what? Yeah! The Earth actually is emitting anti-neutrinos, antimatter, just as we would predict if the black hole principle was correct. Now again, all of these things are not within the current scientific paradigm. They're not explainable by the science that we have now. We really have to look to a new physics. But you lucky guys actually have it. You understand the black hole principle and you understand the concept that um, everything from the macro to the micro is following the same principle. Now, now we've just discussed the evidence that this is happening within our planet. In later episodes of Punk Science TV, we will look how the black hole principle is responsible for volcanoes, which is why um, you see this lightning in volcanoes, um, because it's these fast-moving electrons, again, coming out of the volcanoes themselves. And um, these fluctuations, obviously volcanoes do that. And we'll also be looking to the Earth's atmosphere as well. And in the Earth's atmosphere, um, we know that there are gamma ray bursts, you know, that other signature of the, um, of the black hole principle, the gamma ray burst, um, is actually present in the Earth's upper atmosphere with um, fast moving electrons, we call this lightning, and uh, also antimatter has also been detected from these terrestrial gamma ray flashes as they're called much to the surprise of NASA but guess what it all fits with this idea that um, the same principle is happening at every single le level of the universe so there you have it our very own planet Earth shows evidence of black hole principle behavior in the interior the Earth itself is one big black hole dynamo and within the Earth there's black holes on black holes, it's a fractal pattern that goes throughout every level and that's giving you the terrestrial gamma ray flashes, the volcanoes and other weather phenomena. We'll go into the other aspects of um, the black hole principle another time but this has been um, Punk Science TV all about our planet Earth. Thank you.